Have you ever had something hurled at you by an unknown entity? Do hauntings put strains on a relationship? What would you do if a haunting drove you into a depressed and sleep-deprived state? Today, we test the believability of the Sault Saint spirit. Welcome to Believing the Bizarre, where we dive into the unknown and the unusual and tell you whether or not we find a believable. That is right. It's another Tuesday. We're already one month through the year of 2023. I cannot believe that. That's crazy. We're already in, in, in uh, February. February. You got there. Yes. The shortest month, but also a very cold month. And also Black History Month. And Valentine's Day month. Oh, and my wife's birthday. And your wife's birthday. Happy birthday, honey. That's it. Everything else. Done count. Groundhog Day today. Oh, is it yesterday. today or was it yesterday? yesterday? Did he see his shadow? Yes, it was the third year in a row. Okay. I saw an article. I love that movie. You ever seen that movie? With uh Bill Murray? Yeah, it's great. Yeah. They should just have the groundhog in Ohio. He'd never see a shadow because it's never sunny. Or which one means colder? When he sees his shadow. It means insecure he goes back in and he's like, I'm going back to bed. Yeah, just do in Ohio. He'll never see that shit. I was answering your questions in my head when you asked them. Oh yeah. The second one, does, does the it, haunting put a strain on a relationship? Absolutely. I think it does, but we'll talk about it, obviously. But. This is a unique episode. We're in listener submission week, and I just want to put up front, if you have a paranormal encounter, a spooky experience, head to believingthebizarre.com, submit your experience, and with as much detail as possible, please let us know what went down. We'll get to it on the podcast eventually. Eventually. We got two. One is going to be that shorter intro. From a guy I actually went to high school with, Mike Jones. Oh, snap. He, oh, Mike. Yeah. yeah we yeah. were in band together, and he's somebody who uh, shared the same passion. This is actually really good timing. He had, he shared the same passion for Resident Evil 4 that I did. Like, mm-hmm. we would always talk about Resident Evil 4 and how much we love the game and how, like, every three months we wanted to restart it. So I hope he gets a chance to play the remake. I'm very much looking forward to it. So you played trumpet in band. What did he play? He played trumpet. Oh, you're both we trumpet stuck players. stuck together. Ah. Uh. I don't think I don't know if we were in the same squad. I played that's... saxophone because that's why my teeth are messed up. What? Because of the reed? No. <laughs> well, because the mouthpiece, you have to bite down the mouthpiece. Are your teeth messed up? The front there. You got a gap? No, no. Oh. Like the two chips in the front. Oh, I don't see the chips. You, know, you probably used to if see you, them. If you had a gap though, then you'd be like a model. <laughs> they like that. I do they? Yes. I didn't know that. Okay, so here's our first little haunting story. This is like the uh, the pre. These are the previews before you get to the feature length film. I never thought of them like that. That's such a that's a cool one. I think it, they never get made. It's <laughs> it's it's a good way to do it. It's it's kind of like when you go see a Disney film. And oh, I think those shorts. The, yes, yeah, it's a short. I love those shorts. Yeah, God, I like Disney. All right, so this encounter takes place in the fantastic state of Ohio. Ohio. Yes. Are you ready? Yeah, I know Ohio. You do. I don't think you know this place, though. Quote, when I was in college, I was part of a paranormal investigation group on campus. Oh, we didn't do that. No, I don't think it was offered. For one of our investigations, I arranged for us to investigate the church my family has gone to for many years. Members of the church had mentioned various different experiences. For example, seeing a face in the window of one of the rooms on the second floor when the building would be empty, hearing strange noises when the building was alone, etc. We investigated the building twice in the brief history of our group, the first being the most active. During the first investigation, we actually made contact with an entity using a technique we'd seen on ghost hunters and using a flashlight with the back twisted almost off so that it could be turned on and off with just very little pressure. As we started into the session, we started to ask basic questions like, did you attend the church here? Is there anyone here with us? Standard things like that. We were getting consistent answers for about 20 minutes where the flashlight would turn on solidly and then turn off. It didn't flicker. It didn't fade in and out like an electronical problem. It was like hitting a light switch. It was during the session that I had a name pop into my mind from when we were doing research on the church, which has over about 100-year history. And I asked if the entity was the person whose name I recalled 
and the flashlight immediately turned on. This entity, if it really was the person I'd asked, still has living relatives who attend the church. We tried to do a second session like this on the second floor of the education wing of the church, basically the part where the Sunday school and choir practices, and we had made contact with a different entity who the empath in our group felt didn't have as good of control as the previous entity and couldn't manipulate the flashlight very well. But differently than from the first time, it gave the room we were in a very heavy and oppressive feel to it. Talking with members of the church, they believed that it was an old janitor or a caretaker that didn't like us being in the building at odd hours. We also spent time throughout the night debunking various things, you know, what could have been giving us these uneasy feelings such as high EMF from the circuit box. Okay. So there were some privacy things that did follow up with Mike. So he obviously didn't want to say the name because he wanted to keep the family private. Right. Because they're still alive. Yeah, and he didn't want to say the name of the church because his family still goes there and doesn't didn't want that out there. Okay, he he, I know th- I know the church, but uh, uh, he asked me not mm, to. I don't know it. That's fine. So I think I don't. I feel like I'd seen it on Ghost Adventures, but I haven't watched Ghost Hunters for a very long time. So basically, you just make it. You unscrew the back of a light, a, a flashlight, so that it's very very easy. And then it's just if it turns on, it means yes, and if it doesn't turn on. Either it's no or you didn't get an answer. Mm -hmm. I wonder how uh, reliable that method is. I don't know. I think actually when I've seen my ghost adventures, instead of it being, and and obviously you have to work within the confines of of what you have at your disposal. Yeah. But I think ghost adventures, instead of it being a flashlight, I think it was multiple lights. And I think, Mm. I I don't know if it was Zach or it was probably Zach, but I think he made it clear that's like, this light means this and this light means this. So instead of it just being like on or off or like flickering Mm -hmm. or, you know, like any type of malfunction, it was... If that light, if this light lights up, it means yes. If that light, so that way it's, it's not the same thing making multiple answers. Like if if you're getting lights bouncing back and forth from two different you know light sources, not that it makes it more credible, but it's just two separate things. But I mean, at your disposal, I mean that's something we would have never thought of. Which is you that's know, true. I I never thought about doing that. My would, my go to is Ouija board. <sighs> No, we were using our cell phone to get EVPs. Yeah. Would you hold the flashlight? If we were doing it, would you have held the flashlight or would you have had... I, think, I don't think you can hold the flashlight. You just put it on the ground? I think so. You're just touching the back of it. <laughs> oh. But what do you, I mean, there's not a ton of details. No. This feels like an exciting amateur investigation team that, that got more than they were expecting, but nothing that's like... Yeah. Mind blowing. Well, that's, that's the thing that makes it more, almost more credible, right? Is that it is almost run in the mill. It is one of those stories that's not very big, but you could say that evidence is is still really strong, mm-hmm. but not earth shattering. I think, I, and I wonder if this was one of their first investigations because it just makes makes me think of the first time we went and ghost hunted, and we got activity, and we're like, "Oh my god, this is so easy!" Yeah, and then never again. <laughs> but that is Mike's story. Thank you, Mike, for submitting that. I hope you get to enjoy Resident Evil 4. And with that said, let's move on to the main story. So here is our main story. It's from Dan. It takes place in Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan, which you would not think it's Sioux. Look at how it's spelled. Where's it at? Oh. It looks like salt. Oh, that. Uh, <laughs> but it's Sioux. Okay. Sure. I am so appreciative that he told me how to say it because I'd be doing this entire episode like the Salt St. Marie. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. Now, I'm not going to lie, Dan, if you're listening. I did check on YouTube to make sure it was Sue and you were just pulling my leg, but it is it is Sue. So this involves an off-campus house that him, his girlfriend, and one of his best friends stayed at for a year. What's the college? It's some Michigan college. They probably <laughs> said it in here. It's like UC. So, 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 oh, like, I know it's, it's not Ann Arbor. No, it's not Ann Arbor. Lake Superior State University. Okay, cool. I don't know what that is. And this takes place the years 2012, 2013. So it was around the time we were in college. Yeah, all right. But basically, it's 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 a story of three friends struggling in... in Named not, Alex, Tyler, and Charlie. No, <laughs> three friends struggling, trying to get through school while there's a haunting taking a toll on them. Did you ghostwrite this? I did not. (laughs) No, we went through nothing like this. Okay. Really? Uh, No. Dan, I'll ask you again at the end if you think it's anything like the little things that we... Um, So Dan wanted to give a little bit of a background on the area. So this is a quote from him. 
Before we get into it, I want to give y'all a background on the city of Sault Ste. Marie, or as it's more commonly called by the locals, the Sioux. Sault Ste. Marie is found at the terminus of I-75 on the border uh, with Canada in Michigan's Upper Peninsula, and it is old. The city was founded in 1668. The city has had its fair share of strange and bizarre events that range from the common sight of seeing ghost soldiers march down the street at night to the unsolved mystery of the Sugar Island murders. So there's your unquote. There's your background. I mean, I respect the history that Dan gave to you already. That's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So we got to we got to go back 11 years now. It's 2012. Uh, okay. we, were, we were sophomores in college. Yeah. Hair was longer. I think so. Mine or yours? Mine, mine. You know, yeah, you had shaggy, shaggy hair. That was horrible, Dr. Horrible year. So you, yeah, you had that, yeah. like, it went to your eyebrows. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's 2012, April of 2012, and Dan is attending Lake Superior State University. He decides to live off campus, which I can only imagine was to save a little bit of money mm-hmm. on ridiculous room and board costs. Crazy. I did one year of that. Lived at Gallucci, and I was like, I'm out. I did like a year and a half. Yeah, and then you're like, I'm out. Like, I can't do it. Dan's friend, Vinny discovered Dan's desire to live off campus. He was also in a bit of a predicament because all his friends had graduated and needed he needed a place to stay for his final year too. Mm. And where he was staying at was open, but the price was too high. So Vinny mentioned to Dan that his property owner had an apartment that was open for rent. Um, It was a duplex next door to where he was currently staying. And he asked if he wanted to rent it with him. The price was still a little bit high because Dan admits he was that very stereotypical poor college student. Yeah, for sure. Totally get it. But he was able to convince his girlfriend, Amy, to go live with them. So it's Dan, his girlfriend, Amy, and their friend, Vinny, who are now going to be staying in this off-campus apartment duplex house thing. I feel like in college, it's not a super hard sell. No. To someone you're dating. Yeah, do you want to save money and just and stay with And be like roommates? Yeah. Totally. Sure. So they move up to the Sioux. They're all roommates. It's all good. When they first toured the apartment, Vinny and even the landlord himself had mentioned that past tenants claimed that there seemed to be some weird paranormal activity inside the duplex. Okay. In fact, they pretty much said it was haunted, straight up. They said, like, hey, it's a ghost. But this wasn't an issue because one, and, and maybe here's another common thread beyond hauntings between Dan and Mike. Dan was part of an amateur paranormal investigation group, ah, which never comes back into play. And, and you're, I'm going to keep wondering throughout the entire length of this, this story, this episode, why maybe they didn't come and help him out. Mm. But anyway, so he was part of this paranormal investigation group and he assumed that it would either be nothing or on like the other end of the spectrum, maybe you'd be like little things here and there. And he thought maybe it'd be kind of like a quirk, like a quirky mm. thing. Like, oh, look, I'm living in my haunted off-school campus duplex. How well, maybe, weird. Well, maybe he thought that if the team came in, like it would make it worse. It might amp it up. Is that? I don't know if that's the point of, I guess they do. They it ramp it up to get, he's like, listen, the rest of the semester is going to be hell, but we're going to get like <laughs> 500 views on YouTube, bro. <laughs> Good looking out. <laughs> oh shit, I forgot to hit record. We'll have to do this again. <laughs> I mean, maybe that's his eyes are bleeding. <laughs> I guess he, I guess he doesn't need help to prove that it's haunted. I guess, and they're not, they're not going to get rid of it if they're an amateur. No, <laughs> they're not going to cleanse the house. Oh, well, it's real scary, bro. Bye. <laughs> yeah, see you. I'm going to go back to my non-haunted house. So anyway, so he he's somewhat familiar with with hauntings, and he wasn't nervous about it. And two, Vinny and Amy do not believe in ghosts, so they didn't care because they didn't believe. He didn't believe at all. They didn't believe. Uh, I don't. <laughs> the ghost saying you about to find out today. I guess we did live with a skeptic. Parker, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he also had one of the scariest pieces of activity I've ever heard in my life. Or the basket? Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, he didn't believe, so it's he should, fine. You should send that story in. Also, and I don't mean to sway you, you, Charlie, or you, the listener of this, this here podcast, because I know this is an audio platform. And like a book, like if you're watching a movie, what you're seeing is what you're seeing. But when you're reading a book, have you, okay, have you ever read a book and you're talking about a character with someone who also read the same book? Okay. And you describe how you saw the character and like, oh, I didn't see that at all. Oh yeah. Yeah. I have too. But that's the thing is you're reading a book and you're picturing it in your head. So I'm not trying to paint this picture of Vinny for you. I want you to have your own picture of him. But the only way I see this guy is he's tall, lanky. He's wearing an oversized suit and his hair is slicked back. <laughs> That's the only way I see Vinny. You and- know what's funny? I see Vinny completely different. Okay. Because I have a predetermined notion of, of Vinny 
from Jersey Shore. Is he a used car salesman? No, it's from Jersey Shore. Oh, okay. So a twenty year old who always does the fist pump okay. is partying all the time. Is his hair slicked back? Uh, I think it was cropped real yeah. short. Okay. So no. I I picture this like used car salesman, baggy suit, like hair slicked back. That, He's like, Dan, if you don't buy this car, I can't pay rent. Yeah. It's like, I need you to buy this car. <laughs> So anyway, that's, so they move in, it's April, you know, they're splitting the costs, it's all good. May 2012, they sign the dotted line, grab their keys, and they move in. Over, well, it's for the next year. Oh, okay. Now they have it for summer, but they don't stay there for summer. Over the next couple of months, Dan made the hour and a half trip to check on the apartment every now and then, mostly to make sure that no one was squatting in it, mm. and there was no vandalism. I don't know why I worry about that, Michigan's a lovely place. Um, because <laughs> technically they'd be the ones responsible if, you know, if anything happened. Yeah. And these summertime visits were the first sign to Dan that something just felt a little bit off. Every time that he checked on the apartment, he was hit by this massive wave of just feeling very uneasy. Oh, not a good sign. Which even for him as part of an an amateur paranormal investigation team felt strange. But he always chalked this up to the fact that the house was deserted and, you know, just like being in this big empty space, you know, could feel creepy. But he admits that he couldn't shake the feeling that he wasn't alone in the house. And every time he entered it, he had this ominous feeling like he was being watched. Not good. Uh, So despite the 90 minutes it took him to get there, this made the visitations pretty short. In, check it out, go back. It's a long drive to just check out a place. Yeah. Hopefully there's at least like one good food spot that he was able to like- I was thinking like you could stop halfway. And pick up something. Or, oh gosh. So as summer started dwindling down and fall was coming around the corner, he slowly started moving his belongings there. And once Vinny and Amy did the same, it started to finally feel more like home to him. And he actually said it felt very cozy and comfortable. Makes sense. When you start to like make it feel like alive. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Not undead alive, just alive. (laughs) Although our apartment never looked that good. We had It didn't look great, but it was homey. Mm. I thought it was homey. So this cozy comfortableness lasted for about six weeks or so. The first paranormal experience didn't occur until October 12th, which is my dad's birthday, by the way. Just oh. throwing that there. So on this day, October 12th, Amy and Dan return home from a baby shower. He always associates the date with what was happening, which is how he remembers it, which I appreciate because I, I would feel the same. Like he knows that because this is 11 years ago, he knows that this was October 12th because he remembers the wedding shower on that day. Mm, makes sense. So there, so Amy and Dan was his wedding shower. Um, I'm sure Dan was very excited about going to the, the wedding the, or sorry, it was a baby shower. I'm sure. Dan was very excited about going to this baby shower. And when they come home, they were very confused to find Vinny sitting out front in his boxers, depending on how much of a party school you attend. I guess this could be yeah unusual, but in this case, it was pretty strange. It's not like it's OU. <laughs> no, that, that's a party school. One time there was at three in the morning. And, and when I lived in Gallucci and you lived in Gallucci, mm-hmm. I don't, maybe you'd remember this. Maybe you don't. There was a it was on different floors. Yeah. It didn't matter. <laughs> um, outside in the parking lot, there was a massive brawl. Yes. And I, I remember that I, distinctly. I, <laughs> it was wild. I don't know why Tyler, my roommate was in the shower, but he's in the shower. And I called out to him like, dude, there's, there's like 40 people in a brawl in the parking lot. And he comes running out of the bathroom with his towel <laughs> around his waist and he's looking out and it's just like 40 people going at it. And then they yeah. all just start scattering. Yeah, I remember that. Anyway, so they're coming back, baby shower. They see Vinny in his underwear, and naturally, they are concerned. And Vinny explained that he was taking a shower when the bathtub began to back up pretty bad, to the point that he couldn't finish his shower. So he called the property owner, and he said that Vinny would have to go to the basement to unclog the drain, which... I feel like if you're renting, that's the point of renting. So, you know, you, I feel like you have to go like, to the basement. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to stay in the shower. You go down to the basement yeah. and you unclog it. That's not how it went down. So knowing that Dan and Amy were going to be coming back from the baby shower soon, he decided that he would just wait it out. I guess it was common knowledge that Dan was a little bit more mechanically savvy than Vinny. So he waited about an hour, hour and a half or so for Dan and Amy when he heard the front door slam. And he figured it was them finally coming home. But when he left his room in the apartment, it was completely empty. So then he rushed out the front door to see if somebody was messing with him or somebody was playing a prank. There was no one outside. But to make matters worse, as he was searching outside and looking for the possible trickster, he heard a little click and the door slam. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> and he turned around and the apartment door was locked. Oh, 
yeah. And it made no sense to him. Obviously, it would make no sense. He opened the door. It yeah. was unlocked when he opened it. Yeah. He stepped outside. No explanation for how it shut behind him and no explanation for how it locked. I feel like even in that situation, I'd bring my keys because I'd be scared of that. But I don't know. I've never done that. So. Um, I, have an, I have a key outside in the back of my mind. So I'm never that worried about it because I always know where I have a key mm-hmm. hidden. So obviously he was stranded and Dan noticed that when he unlocked, because Dan was thinking, okay, maybe something accidentally closed the door, but it wasn't just the handle, like the knob that was locked, the deadbolt went to. So it was like a Ooh, very, whole thing. very decisive locking, Yeah, which Dan was still kind of downplaying. Yeah. It, now this isn't quite as bird in the walls, but he thought maybe the, the, the power, the, the force of the door slamming shut caused the deadbolt to, I don't know, to turn. Unless your deadbolt is angled like this. Maybe it's what well, this, maybe this house is built in 1668. I don't know. <laughs> Speaking um, of bird in the walls, remember we had a bird in our house? We did. A, <laughs> we did. I was yeah. I was calling someone about something, maybe an apartment. I had a very important you had an interview. Oh my god. I had a very important phone call and I and I literally had to tell her, sorry, there's a bird in the apartment. <laughs> did you get the job? I think so. I think it was Western No. It was Toys R Us. I, if it was, I, I should Or Old Navy. No, it was it might have been Old Navy. Yeah. This is a long time ago. So despite all the door locking hoopla. The original issue remained that the bathtub was clogged and it needed to be unclogged down in the basement. So Dan shook off the strange occurrence and proceeded to the basement with Vinny by his side. In his boxers. In his boxers. Maybe he, maybe he changed. Maybe he didn't. Didn't matter. Out of his oversized suit. And Dan acknowledges that the basement is what folks in the area call a, quote, Michigan basement, meaning it consists of field stone walls and dirt floor. Oh, God, I hate that. And the only source of light that the guys had in the basement was one small light bulb close to the basement door. But Vinny did have a flashlight, but, you know, still kind of a creepy setting. So here's a quote from Dan regarding what they experienced as they started the process of unclogging the bathtub drain. Quote, As we began the process of unplugging the tub, we started being pelted by gravel. First, just the occasional flick here and there. But as the minutes dragged on, It felt like someone was throwing handfuls of gravel at us. We picked up our pace and soon finished with the tub. We were a bit creeped out at this point as we were confident that we were alone. As we left the basement, we froze as we heard a loud bang as something struck the door. I quickly turned around and opened the door to discover a large stone the size of a brick had struck the door. Unquote. It was totally Amy. (laughs) <laughs> Amy just messing with him. Yeah, right. No, that's really scary though. In that basement, the dirt floor with the with the field stone. Imagine this like rocks being pelted at you. Like I feel like you feel one or two, and you're like, "This is weird. Is it falling from the?" the it must ceiling? be from the yeah. But ceiling. then like if but there it, like anything hitting you is so different than it falling. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like it's kind of like when you're driving on the highway behind a truck and it's like spitting rocks up at you. Yeah. It's just like you, even though it's an accident, you get yeah, like, Oh, it's hitting my car. You get angry. And that's, but that's so different than like hail, you know, yeah. like, like something falling versus something getting like thrown at you. And then, you know, a giant rock being tossed at the very end. Yeah. Well that like a very, just like go get out of here. It's like, you're yeah. lucky. Like what, if, like then you're thinking, what if we would have stayed? But also it's like, they couldn't just leave. It's not like, Hey, let's go check out the basement. Things are getting thrown at us. Let's go. Like they had a mission. Yeah. Like they had to, un- like they had to stay there, unclog the tub because if they didn't or the drain, because if they didn't, they just have to go back there again later. No, you, you say, Hey, uh, landlord. Yeah. You could not do it. He, he comes with like a shield. <laughs> it's like, oh, it's pretty normal. <laughs> like right? a riot shield. Yeah. Full body gear. So the next occurrence happened a month later, almost the day on November 11th. Dan specifically remembers this date because Amy was in a play that weekend. So okay. it's another association another yeah. that's tying in. Yeah. So uh, since she was starring in this play, which I don't know what the play was, and I kind of wish I, would, I knew. Uh, my hunch is it's college, so it's probably like, oh, what's that play called? Townspeople or something? Townspeople? Old Town or... Old Townspeople. Townsmen. Thoroughly modern. Movie. Hold on. Our Town. I was thinking about Our Town. Our Town? Our Town. Yeah, there's a lot of musicals or plays. It could be, I don't know. Our Town is not a musical. I'm not going to lie. I, I took just 10 minutes to try and find, look up this school in that year. Nothing came up. Although it could have been community theater, so it could have been a red herring. But anyway, since she was starring in this play, she wanted to make the weekend special 
So she invited some out of town friends to come over, watch the play, and spend the night at their apartment. At their haunted, haunted at apartment. Haunted home. The play was awesome. I guess I don't know. I didn't see it, so I. They, he said it was awesome. I believe it was probably uh, pretty e- good. Even if it wasn't great, I bet Amy did awesome. I bet, despite how the play actually was, Dan was so infatuated with Amy at the moment that it didn't matter. It did not matter. Yes. Uh, they had a great time. After the show, they stayed up at the apartment drinking and playing some board games. Around 1 a.m., they decided to call it for the night, and Dan and Amy headed to their room while her friends slept on the pull-out couch in the living room. That lasted until about 3 a.m. Here, hour. The witching hour. Here is the experience in Dan's words. At roughly 3 a.m., Amy and I were woken up by pounding on our door. As we opened the door, our friends stood there with a shocked look. They claimed that they'd been woken up by a large shadow man shaking them awake. Before they could scream, they said that they saw two people arguing in the kitchen, and it looked like a man had just hit a woman. When they rushed into the kitchen, it was empty, but all the lights were on. They quickly thanked us for our hospitality and said that they were leaving. Unquote. Wow. They're like, well, we got to go. Yeah. Great. Thanks for having us over. We'll check out that one fun restaurant and then we're out. Three in the morning. They leave at three in the morning. Yeah. It's, well, wow. I, if I was, yeah, they're probably feeling awake right now. They're adrenaline. They're like, that was terrifying, but I am pretty sleepy. <laughs> I don't know. It must have been really something to leave that early. Well, I mean, you're you're laying down and you're being shaken awake by a shadow figure. And yeah. And you I, see two entities in the kitchen. I'm not trying to downplay it. I'm just saying, like, it's got to be something. Yeah. Sounds like it was something. So obviously, Amy and Dan were pretty confused because they didn't hear anything. Like, everything that the friends claimed, like the shaking, you know, almost yelling, seeing somebody hit someone in the kitchen... Amy and Dan didn't hear any of that. Like, the only thing they heard was the pounding on the door, which woke them up. So they're trying to make sense of everything, and then Vinny comes out of his bedroom, and he looks just absolutely disturbed. So then Dan and Amy ask him what happened with him, and Vinny says that he was woken up by a loud banging in the living room, but that he felt just this immense pressure on his body. The way he put it, it was almost if something as big as an elephant was sitting on him. He couldn't move a muscle. He said that it took him almost an hour to just completely shake it off. So Amy and Dan are shocked. Like, obviously, they had the locked door and the basement experience. But now this is Amy's friends and Vinny having just this unexplainable encounter and experience. And at the same time, as the witching hour. So my question to you is, is do you think this was sleep paralysis? For all of them or for Vinny? No, Vinny. For Vinny. Vinny. They had the opposite of sleep paralysis. They were being shaken. <laughs> uh, uh, no, I don't know. I don't know. Was he able to move? He said there's a pressure. He was not able to move. He didn't see anything though. No, he only heard banging. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. But it's interesting what happened at the same time as other people experience something as well. Yeah. Well, yeah. So now, okay. So if we got, if we, this is like clue. Yeah. You know, we got shadow figure. And just this random apparition of a man hitting a woman. Is there going to be a research montage? <laughs> there should be. There's not. Oh. There should be. So over the next couple of months, there was nothing major that happened. But they did start to notice little things here and there that didn't seem to make sense or add up. For instance, Amy at one point accused Dan of hiding a childhood photo album of her. And, and she couldn't find it. It's not like it was misplaced. Like she had a childhood photo album. And it was just gone. And I guess the reason she would accuse Dan is because they're in the same room. Like, okay. Wouldn't it be funny if I hid your precious memories? <laughs> I, I don't know. We weren't, we're not, not there for those conversations. I don't know. Vinny came home from class one day and he swore that he saw three people standing in the living room through the window only to rush in and find it completely empty. That's when you leave. That's right there. We're looking for the moment when you leave. That's the, that's the moment. Yeah. And then Dan started having a very disturbing, reoccurring dream. And in the dream, he would wake up to find himself in bed all alone, no sign of Amy, just completely frozen, unable to move. And he'd look around the room slowly with his eyes, and the door would creak open. And on the other side of the door, it was just this this thick blackness seeping into the bedroom. And it would just creep closer and closer to the foot of his bed 
and get closer to him. And right as it was about to touch Dan, he would wake up from the dream in a cold sweat. Ooh, I don't like that one at all. That's that's not good. So I know we kind of, you know, horror movies and, and we joke like, just leave. But this is the middle of a school year, close to the end of the first semester, and you signed a lease. Would you, if, you, if, if this had happened to you, would you stick it out or what are you thinking? I, in college, mm. in college, so I'm putting myself in the mindset of college. Sure. I, I'd crowd surf. I crowd surf. Long word. Couch? I would couch surf. I would, I would not stay there. I'd stay at friends' places. Yeah. Go home on the weekends. Yeah. Is it unusual that Dan hasn't had his in paranormal investigation team over a little bit? It's very strange. Like you're getting these phenomenons. Things are happening. They're like looking for things to like, they're like, <laughs> yeah. God, we haven't gotten anything in weeks. And he's just like, no leads. He's, he's like, like yeah. I can't sleep. <laughs> <laughs> no leads. Yeah. Weird how we keep seeing ghosts <laughs> and you could, you could probably go there and see a ghost. They're like, they're no, like, nah. we're going to check out the library. So as the semester ended, they decided it would be a good idea understandably to go home for the holidays and spend a little bit of time away from the Sioux. <laughs> the the Sioux? So ra- around mid December, they packed up their car and they were ready to leave before they went home for the holidays. The three roommates agreed to turn off all the lights, set the heat down low, not off Charlie. <laughs> so the pipes wouldn't freeze but low to keep the general utilities bill cheap because obviously they were still paying for it that yeah. month, but they weren't going to be there. So might as well keep it low lights off. Heat low, deadbolt the door, and then we're on our way. And to the best of Dan's knowledge, the apartment did remain empty for two weeks. Okay, that's good. So when they returned at the beginning of January, they were absolutely shocked and horrified with what they discovered. Every single window was wide open. The front door was wide open. All the lights were turned on and the faucets were gushing water. Oh my God. So naturally, they're frantically running around, running inside the apartment, trying to shut the windows, turn off the faucets. And it took them a few moments to realize it, but it started feeling really warm in there and not just warm, but hot. They found the thermostat had been set to 80 degrees. Oh, my God. You call call police, right? That's exactly what they did. So they weren't sure what to do. And they called the police. Yeah. The police searched the apartment, but reported that there was no sign of forced entry No footprints other than their own, which is kind of immaculate. Like, I've called the police a couple times at Akron, and they're not doing anything about footprints. (laughs) They're like, no, it doesn't look like any. No, yeah. (laughs) Dude, when my car got broken into. Oh, yeah. And I called them. They were like, what do you want us to do about it? (laughs) And I hung up. I know. And I'm like, true, but at least a little empathy would go along. (laughs) Have a good day. I guess there's probably people getting shot all the time in Akron. So my <laughs> Jeep being broken into probably wasn't the, the biggest concern. Was that your Jeep? It was my Jeep. It wasn't your, I don't know. I've only had the Jeep and the Honda. Yeah, I was saying that, the Honda. The Honda got in 2015. Oh, we okay. were out of college then. Well, we were out of undergrad. Oh, I was thinking about the time your car got stolen. <laughs> that was this car. Yeah. Yeah, no, this was when my, my window got bashed in. in oh, University I remember College. that. Yeah, 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 I remember that one. So no forced entry, no sign of any other people. Or any, you know, any foul play. But the officer noted that this wasn't the first time that they've been called to inspect suspicious and unusual activity at the house. In fact, he said it was pretty well known that the place was haunted and it was even rumored to be an old brothel. So this was obviously not what Dan, Amy, and Vinny wanted to hear. But like I mentioned earlier, being broke college kids, they really didn't have any other choice. So they decided to just tough it out. Uh, It's hard, but. And I want to say. I think the brothel thing is a very interesting because he didn't say he mentioned the guy hitting the, the girl. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that is, which is interesting because it's like the research montage was changed to a police officer giving a tidbit of knowledge. Yeah. But I think there's something to the old brothel. I think that that's something that at the end of the episode, we'll be able to look back on it and mm-hmm. have some conversations about. So over the next couple of months, each Student had their own personal run-ins and their own encounters. We'll go through each one. Dan started having that reoccurring dream about the blackness more and more. I don't like that at all. It got to the point that he was waking up almost every other night screaming in full terror. It was so bad that Dan tried his best to just avoid sleep altogether. Which, let me tell you, not easy. No. (laughs) This completely impacted his attitude, his mindset, his grades. 
because after all they were at school like the the whole purpose of them being there was to go to school and to graduate yeah and while avoiding sleep whether and he didn't say one way or the other but whether it's from hallucinations from sleep deprivation or just the house itself which i think are both solid arguments he started seeing shadow figures walk in and out of their kitchen and the apartment at night he'd hear arguments but they felt very distant and kind of muffled and he could never really make out what they were saying it was a struggle for him by the end of february his classes and his grades were completely slipping he was behind on his thesis work and his teacher started noticing and asking if he was okay obviously he didn't just want to be like oh my house is haunted i'm seeing shadow figures and i can't sleep so he just said he was having trouble sleeping at night and that he might be suffering from depression which in all actuality was probably true yeah I wonder if he could have been like, my house is haunted. Uh, there's I wonder pro- what looks he would have got. I think it's one of those things where you, somebody might view it as an insecurity when it's not an insecurity. Mm-hmm. This isn't a good example, but it's like, you know, growing up colorblind. It's like there's a stage in your life where maybe you're ashamed of that. Mm-hmm. But then you just realize like, you know, it's just how I am. You know, I feel like nobody now people might people like you and me would be like, that sounds terrible. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe there's people out there that are like, oh, this dude loony. This guy's crazy. He's, he's not sleeping because he thinks his house is haunted. Like, sure, you might run into that. So I don't blame him for necessarily not wanting to say it. Totally fair. But it is it is an external thing. I don't know. Yeah. He must just not have felt safe enough to say that, which That's is a bummer. Totally. T- probably true. Yeah. He did start seeing a therapist, which he said it was nice to finally be able to talk to someone. But life at the apartment was just getting harder and harder. Amy, on the other hand, kept experiencing more and more of her items disappearing. That sucks. She lost her childhood photo album. She lost her baby blanket. And even undergarments turned up missing. You know what she needed to do? She needed to pay the fae in food to have the fae combat the ghosts Ah. and bring her stuff back. I think that would make it better. You might be surprised to hear that that that's not where this goes. I'm, I'm, I'm shocked. Yeah. Okay. On the for real. And, And this is Dan's story, so I don't feel terrible about saying this and if his friend's listening i apologize especially about the you know the, the car salesman thing is there any chance some of this could just be vinny taking her stuff yeah okay taking her stuff yeah he's the one maybe he came back early opened the windows turned on the faucet turned the heat up he is the one that told them about the door locking behind them now the gravel and the friends waking up sounds like ghosts if there's okay and and maybe in the back of your mind, think about this. The only way that this could be not haunting or like not 100% haunting is Vinny, in my opinion. Yeah, but I don't know. That feels, it's putting a lot of weird stuff on Vinny. Like, I just met the guy, so I can't, I don't, I'm not, I'm not <laughs> trying to do this to him now. I'm just trying to think like, if there's any chance it's not a haunting, he's the only person I could think of. I would feel more confident saying that someone broke into their apartment, turned up the heat, open all the windows and turn on the water then saying it was someone who lived there what about what about stealing amy's stuff that's just weird i don't think so but i can't say no completely because i again i don't know the guy but that just it seems to almost put yourself in such a hostile environment and it took, maybe for the thrill of it i don't know i, I mean we don't know we don't know anything would you, i find would that you would you buy a car from Vinny? yeah okay i find that doubtful i don't know I, okay 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 and and let me be clear that's not me saying I believe Vinny is behind any of this. That's just throwing a theory out there. Just into the, throwing it up, seeing if it sticks. Vinny's going to kick your ass. I know he's going to find me. <laughs> I had a great deal on a Toyota, but now I'm just going <laughs> to smack you over the head. So anyway, so she's losing all this stuff. And she also experienced secondhand what Dan was going through. So she also found herself going through a bit of a depression as well. And naturally, fighting became more and more common. As Amy was on edge and Dan was sleep deprived. I don't know why. I, I just imagine <laughs> Duke and oh, uh, like the kitchen ghosts. Yeah, they're just no. no, they're like throwing hands. I think it's just yelling. Yeah, it makes sense. So she would yell at Dan for how he poorly cleaned the dishes. Dan would start fights about how she shoveled the sidewalks. It was like those little tiny things that just blew up unnecessarily. Also, that also just happens with living a significant other for an amount of time. Yeah. Which like is four probably months, four months, but that's it's probably amplified though by this situation. Oh, absolutely! With the apartment looming in the background, all yeah. the spooky stuff, absolutely. And she's not on the same page as me. She accused Dan of hiding her belongings to mess oh. with her. Mm. 
I don't, I don't know. I don't, I, this is from Dan's perspective, so he could be painting himself as the good guy here. But, but I'm going to go on a limb and say I don't think Dan's hiding it. They both knew that they needed time away, but they were stuck in the apartment. In Dan's opinion, though, Vinny had it the worst of all of them. And here's a quote from Dan. Around the end of January, we stopped seeing Vinny. We would hear him come out of his room, but he would avoid us. I stopped seeing him in class and would only get the occasional text asking to bring him food. We would hear sitcoms and smell weed, but that was about it. Unquote. Oh, so he's, he's spiraling. Oh, spiraling. He's, he's going, yes. Yeah, spiraling down. So who knows what, what things he's facing and what things he's experiencing. I wonder if he's getting even more vivid apparitions. It's possible, because if you think about it, when it comes to physical contact, he's been the most... Now, obviously, the friends had the brunt of it with the shaking of the shadow figure. Mm -hmm. But Dan and Amy hadn't been touched. They've been having dreams and seeing things. But Vinny's the one that was locked out of the house. Vinny's the one that was being held down by something. Mm -hmm. And yes, it was Dan and Vinny with the the gravel, but maybe it's because Vinny was, you know, maybe Vinny's the one more so attracting. He also saw the apparitions in the room and he ran in. You're right. He did see the three people, the shadows in the, in the house. Yeah. So this all came to a head in April of what must have been 2013. Dan was asked to meet with his academic advisor, and he knew things were rough, but the news that he received was pretty backbreaking. His advisor told him that she didn't see how he could graduate given his current standings in class, and she offered to let him drop all of his classes due to hardship. Wow. Yeah. Dan didn't see any other options, so he accepted the offer. And he said they're doing good now, just as kind of like a a fast forward. But he never graduated. Like this yeah. took away his college experience. He never got a college degree. Wow. Like this this whole experience just kind of broke him down that badly that he just kind of gave up on schooling. That's that's terrible to hear. Yeah, it like like I said at the top, like it's crazy. Like this is like a first hand account of how what a haunting can do to a person in their psyche. Yeah, because it it took a, a college kid and just wrecked him. Broke him, yeah. It's crazy. I'm glad that he's doing okay now though. Yeah. But even in that moment, he still thought of Vinny, and he asked the academic advisor if, if Vinny was going to get the same offer that he got, and she immediately had a confused look on her face, and she told Dan that Vinny dropped his classes all the way back in February. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, my God. Well, I don't know why. That that gave me chills. Well, the next thing I wrote is that literally sent a chill down his spine, too. I think it's just that, like, just like, what has he been going through? What is he doing? What's happened to Vinny? Yeah. Yeah, it's scary stuff. So Dan rushed home to speak with Vinny and try to get an understanding of everything going on. And here's how it went down in Dan's words. Dude, for a second, I thought you'd say, Vinny's, Vinny's never been here. No. Vinny's been dead the whole oh, time. God. Who's Vinny? <sighs> like, that's ridiculous, but also kind of scared. Oh, it's really scary. All right, so, quote, I pounded on his door and was overwhelmed by the smell when he opened the door. He had scratch marks all over his arms and his back, and it smelled like he hadn't bathed in weeks. I'd had enough. I made Vinny put on clothes and took them both out to our go-to restaurant. I decided to tell them everything I'd been going through, for better or worse. I explained the shadow people, the dream, everything. I was relieved to find out that they both had been experiencing much of the same things. I explained my feeling of being trapped in the house, and they both agreed with me that they felt the same way. We decided that we were done. Our lease ran through the end of May, but we decided to move out that weekend. When Friday came around, we began packing up my dad's truck. We discovered, unfortunately, that three people's stuff would not fit in the Suburban. So after a brief discussion, we decided that Vinny and I would run the first load down, and then we would come back with the trailer for Amy. Amy was to remain behind, finish packing. By herself? By herself. Oh, that's (laughs) fucked. The offloading went smoothly, but we returned to find Amy sitting up front of the apartment. Here's what happened after they left. Oh, God. After we left, Amy had continued unpacking, but as she moved the microwave, she discovered a little nook. A hidden nook. Curious, she looked inside to see what she might find. Deep inside the nook, she found everything of hers that was missing. She found her underwear her missing blanket, but most disturbingly, she found her missing photos. The photos were defaced. Both her and her female relatives' faces were scratched out, just the females. She said that as she looked on in horror, 
the front door slammed open and she heard a loud voice yell, Get the f*** out. She promptly left, never to set foot in the apartment again. No. Vinny and I quickly packed up the remaining things and loaded them into the truck. We left a note on the counter with the keys saying they could bill us for any remaining damages. At 3.33 a.m., we left the Sioux for the last time. We crossed the city limits, and I swear it felt like someone pulled a weighted blanket off of me. Unquote. Wow. Jesus Christ. Oh. Yeah. Oh, my God. Could, like, the, the reveal, like, there's two reveals. So Vinny dropped his classes reveal, and then cleaning the microwave, pulling it out, and just find it. It reminds me of the movie we just watched, by the way, Ouija, the Ordinary oh, yeah, yeah, in yeah. the which kind of had the same type the of basement. Nook. Yeah, it definitely did. But just finding a little nook, and you just reach in, and it's, it's your blanket. All the stuff. It's your underwear. Oh. Vinny's like, damn it. That's fine. I said. <laughs> just kidding. Ugh, spooky though, right? No, I think Vinny was haunted the worst. Dude, scratches on his arms and his back. Something was worse in there for him. He, it, it doesn't quite feel demonic, but it seems like if anyone was getting close to like the possession stage or pre- maybe oppression. Yeah, oppression. Yeah, I just, but okay, going back to, well, we'll, we'll talk about this in the discussion. We'll, we'll get to the end of the story here. So Dan admits from time to time he still has a nightmare of the blackness seeping into his room but thankfully, that whole dream is a lot more rare now. He also admits, understandably, that he's a lot more afraid of the dark than he's ever been in his life. He says he's been back to the area several times in the last 10 years, but it's also a trip that's always accompanied by an intense feeling of dread. He never finished his degree and can't bring himself to spend another second at that place. It was too traumatic, and he refuses to ever drive past the house. One positive note, Amy and Dan did end up getting married, and they have two dogs. That's nice. Did did Amy finish? I don't know. She He didn't say. Interesting. He didn't say. They try to keep in touch with Vinny, but he was really hit hard by everything. Yeah. They still talk once or twice a year, but whenever the three of them get together, it's almost like the memories come back, mm-hmm. and it feels kind of unavoidable. So it's a bummer, and I think deep down he really hates it. And it's sad, but they decided that it's probably best to let sleeping dogs lie and to remain very distant friends, which sucks. But yeah. that goes back to the question, the beginning of the, uh, beginning uh, of the episode. You know, it's pretty tough. It's tough. Uh, but I think theirs is probably a little worse. That is Dan's story. That is the Sue spirit, many spirits, the shadow figures. And let's get to the discussion. All right, before we get to the discussion, it is time that we stop the episode and thank our newest patrons on Patreon, who, at the recording of this podcast, include J Train, Taylor, Evan, Rain, Amanda Lee, Phoebe, and Dexter, Charlie. It's a lot of new patrons. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff for them to check out. Why don't you highlight some cool awesome things that exist in our patreon i would love to so my favorite things that we do are the monthly quiz with an episode because it lets you like test your knowledge before you listen to the episode or after if you cheat that's okay i always have a lot of fun with the quiz we also have do you believe the bizarre which is a game we play with producer ben if you go on the patreon and you start to listen to some stuff you will start to be familiar with producer ben he does some of the back stuff for us too he's a great guy we also have social media response which is if you see the questions on Instagram or Twitter or Facebook or wherever you see them and you answer them, we have a conversation with ourselves and producer Ben and we talk about our opinions and we talk about your thoughts as well. We also have a Google meet once a month. I love those. We get to meet the people in the community and we start to grow beyond just a podcast. It's, it's really cool. We also have the Netflix watch party. We just watched maybe the scariest movie I've ever seen. No just, way. It was the scariest movie you've ever seen. It was uh, scary. It was really scary. But it, it was, was very scary. Okay. Uh, well, I guess evil dead was probably the scariest one. We also have our exclusive discord where we give something away once a month for free exclusive don't tell patreon yeah don't tell patreon we do that they don't like giveaways and and not always but sometimes it's a merch item that we hadn't even dropped yet yeah so it's pretty neat 
We also have our, once you've been part of the Dedicateds here for three months, we have our Patreon-only t-shirt. You cannot buy this shirt. You can try to buy it, but we'll probably say no. It's a awesome design. I love when people post pictures on Discord and Twitter and, and Facebook with it. I think it looks awesome, and uh, we've heard good things about it from people. And it's super soft. Just throwing that out there. But thank you, Charlie. There's a bunch of, bunch of bonus content, so if you're liking the podcast and you want a little bit more... Some fun behind-the-scenes stuff, bizarre news, things like that. It is out there waiting for you. But with that said, let's get back to the main episode. Okay, so I'm going to let the Vinny did it thing die. Okay, that's good. I think there's like a 2% chance, but I'm, I'm going to let it slide because I do feel bad for him. He went through hell, I think. Yeah, he, he had a bad time. I wonder if he went back to school. Why was he covered in scratches? What does that mean? Does that mean he did it himself? I... I think, I, it's think so. op- I think it's open ended, but I I don't know. Like it feels like he just never left, and like at least like them kind of going to classes and doing things are like it's almost like he didn't get a chance to leave, and this is just the way I'm interpreting it. Where they like went to class still and still like even if it wasn't successful, they were trying to go out and do things. Yeah, probably together to a shovel, you know, whatever. For sure. But I think me, I don't know if he ever got to escape. He didn't have that other person to rely on as much. Yeah, because like, they had each other. He had his bong. <laughs> from February through May, he might have never left. Yeah, I'm starting to get to that working from home. But my house isn't haunted, so it's it's okay. There are like three days in a row though that I'll be like, "What's outside?" <laughs> I okay. Have no sympathy for you. But let me let me ask you this. Brothel. So yeah. you have the man hitting the woman. Yeah, that's like residual haunting man, movie. Yeah, you have the man hitting the woman. You have the uh you have her like undergarments and stuff being hidden away and stolen. Mm-hmm. And then you have the female pictures, only the female pictures being defaced. Yeah. I think there is something to this being a past brothel. I totally when you first said it, I was like, okay. But that after you found the stash of her things. Yeah, and the and the faces scratched mm-hmm. out. Like that doesn't mean necessarily and that I mean, but like it's in I'm treating it like it's a film where like everything always connects and makes sense. Yeah. But that, that little tidbit of knowledge that we got from the police officer, I feel like it has to fit in somewhere. It, it can also make sense in real life too. But the, my only pushback is maybe Amy would have got it a little bit more. That's true. That's true. It definitely seems like it was Vinny and not yeah. Amy that got the brunt of it. But this is also told from Dan's perspective. So maybe if we received it from Amy's, there's things that maybe even she's not talking about. I wonder if if maybe they're haunted by different entities. It seems like there's more than one. I wonder if he was attacked or haunted by, by possibly victims of the brothel. That's possible. Him being a man, maybe. Mm-hmm. A single man. It is crazy how, like, how differently a haunting can happen. Because when we did, like, Yaz's story, it's like, oh, the man in the curtains, he's fine. He's yeah, nice. He just he stood just, there. He just stands there. It's not a big deal. Versus, like, this. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think there's any chance there's anything demonic here? Or do you think it's just angry spirits? I was thinking about that the whole time. It made me think of this one chapter in The Demonologist, which is the book that is about uh, the Warrens. And they talk about this like black entity that f- f- creeps into their room mm. and made me think of the dream. And the fact that, you, I think you said it, possibly they were leaning toward oppression, mm-hmm. right? That kind of, yeah. their in, past infestation. But what would have it came from, I wonder? I don't know. Maybe just the dark history of this house. It might, or the brothel, the, the energy brothel, that the yeah. brothel can. Another thing with that is these black shadow figures shaking these girls sleeping. In the, and now she didn't say explicitly it was all females. Right. But I mm-hmm. don't know. It's mm-hmm. it's interesting that it's like months apart though. Maybe, mm-hmm. But I'm not super, like I don't, I haven't experienced many hauntings firsthand. By right. many, I mean, I haven't. And that's mm-hmm. for the best in my opinion. But like, I don't know if the activity... Like, it seemed like it was months between things. It does but, ramp up, though. Yeah. And that's it, important. I don't know. Like, I feel so bad for Dan's situation with the sleep deprivation, literally failing out of school because of his living environment. That sucks. Which a lot of people go through that it aren't hauntings. I yeah. mean, there's a lot of people that end up having to drop out of school because of family life and things outside of hauntings. But that doesn't make this any less sad. It was kind that his counselor let him drop 
did mm-hmm. hard shit. The advisor, yeah. So there must have been, he must have been doing rough. Yes, it looked pretty. Yeah. Bad. Get some sleep, dude. But like um, that situation where you're just like, I don't even want to go to sleep because this dream is just so terrifying. Mm-hmm. He actually, uh, I'll share with you. He actually gave me the address of the house. Where is it at? I should look it up. I don't know about you, but, and, and it's already kind of understood that you and I believe in ghosts. Yeah. And for any new listeners out there, because I know every now and then a new listener might pop in, see what's happening, see what this purple podcast is all about. Did you rhyme that on purpose? No. Okay. Um, at the end of every episode, we go up with the believability scale, believable, viable, skeptical, and unbelievable to see how we rate the episode. We might do an, a fascinating, amazing episode and go unbelievable. We've done that. We have done that. But this is a straight up haunting. Three different people encounter it. It's not even them. Even the police officers in the town yeah. are like, that place is haunted. Even the landlord. <laughs> like, who, you dumb idiots. Is there any responsibility from the landlord? I know landlords yes. are like, if you go on Twitter right now, you do not want to be a landlord. Like, they, <laughs> it is a bad time to be a landlord if you're a Gen Z or millennial. Like, they do not like you guys, yeah. landlords. But, like, imagine you just continually rent out this place where it's like, yeah, it's haunted, but a buck's a buck, right? I mean, do you haunt it cheaply? I guess not, because it was expensive. They did, yeah, they did say it was expensive. I think that's the least. I think you should do that, like four hundred dollars a month total. I wonder what would have happened if they actually like brought in methods to like cleanse it. Yeah, I wonder what would happen if they brought in like crosses and sage and stuff like that. I still cannot believe that he didn't have his paranormal investigation team at least come check it out. That's insane. That's insane. They're s- probably starved for content. And he's living through hell. I, you know what probably happened? He was probably experiencing so much. That he didn't want to be around him? He, exactly. He probably lost contact. He probably didn't watch many scary movies during that time. I could not imagine enjoying that. Because that's supposed to be an escape. So for me, based on their three experiences, the level of hauntings that they endured, and I feel like, we'd even, I feel like we don't have the full story. No, like, I, I think either. there's things from Amy and Vinny that we'll just never know about. And I that's so. ominous and, and creepy. But you have people around the area. The landlord said it's haunted. Police officers said that this isn't the first time they've been called there for unusual activity. Even if the brothel thing isn't true, definitely there's some spooky stuff going down here. I go 100% believable that this this apartment duplex house is haunted. I go believable as well. So that is our episode on the Sioux Saint spirit. And also thank you, Mike Jones, for your, your uh, story at the beginning. It's a haunting day. It's a haunting episode. Sometimes it's aliens. Kind of life. Sometimes it's creatures. Today it's ghosts. Uh, Shadow. I, I enjoy ghosts. There's just something. Do that, you enjoy ghosts? Yeah. There's just something that gets me about ghosts. Sometimes it's just like, ooh, ooh, what, what if? Yeah. It's just. It's so much of the unknown. Like, like aliens are unknown, and like there's a lot. Like creatures are unknown. But like when you, I think when you think of creatures, you're like, okay, they kind of have to obey, like physics and Mm -hmm. stuff like maybe they run faster they can climb or they're strong but like okay i can kind of know somewhat what to like i wouldn't want to be one-on-one with a a mountain lion but that like that doesn't mean it's scary but it is scary yeah but like that's like the bigfoot stuff where like ghosts you like you don't know what their rules are you don't know what they could do to you like Mm -hmm. can they hurt you can they touch you can they kill you like you don't know yeah you don't know what universe you're in then no idea i the thing about ghosts for me is i feel like aliens are chance if you're ever going to see an alien, it's chance. If you're ever going to encounter a cryptid, I feel like you have to go into the wilderness or something or live in the rural area. But ghosts, I feel like are, you can almost, you can almost will it to happen if you really want it to happen. Like summoning. Like or calling. summoning or calling or going to a place you know that have many, many reports of being haunted. Yeah. I feel like they're all around. It's just there's certain people that can see them. And if the energy gets high enough, then even yeah. less sensitive people. I like, I, there's, I don't know. The idea of ghosts is just so scary. Yeah. It doesn't have to be scary. Like not every ghost is like out to hurt you. Right. No, we just talked about celebrity ghosts last week. Yeah. And they were, they were, most of those cases were just like, hey, oh, they were the, oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. What were you saying? They were mostly nice. Oh yeah. What Asshole. did I go? Did I go viable or skeptical? You were viable. <laughs> 
changes week to week. Oh, yeah. uh, you punk. But thank you, everybody, so much for listening. And uh, remember, if you want your paranormal experience or encounter on the podcast in the next two years, go to believingthebizarre.com. Go to submit your experience. Fill out the form with as much details as possible. We appreciate it. These are some of my favorite stories and episodes. I yeah. love the personal touch that we get the listener submissions. They're creepy. They're real life encounters. And they give you a chance to get your story out there. And we love telling them. And if you enjoy this episode as well, and if you're on Apple, feel free to leave a review and five stars. That would mean a lot to us. It helps get the podcast out there, helps people see that we're good, and we appreciate it. And if you've been a listener for a little while and you know some of the topics we did in 2022, head over to YouTube. Charlie and I looked at all of the episodes that we thought were the most believable and the most unbelievable. We ranked them and we came up with what we thought was the most believable episode topic of 2022 and the most unbelievable episode topic of 2022 that's on youtube so go check that out and like we mentioned before if you're looking for a little bit more bonus content your tuesdays once you hit the end of this episode feel barren and you need more go to patreon we have a ton of bonus content games fun segments behind the scenes director's cuts quizzes there's so much on patreon we love doing it and i guarantee It'll keep your ear holes busy. So with that said, thank you everybody so much. As always, I'm Tyler. And I'm Charlie. And catch us next week on Believing the Bizarre. A podcast as bizarre as you are. 